All right, guys, so I was trying to do a video about calc wasser paste and trying to help uh, prevent blue anthelia from spreading everywhere. Unfortunately, I did a hyper uh, capture of my video, so it was like a almost like a still time frame where it was like frame by frame and it didn't capture any audio and it was like a time lapse. So I'm going to just kind of throw something together because you can see I already have all this blue anthelia taken off. So I'm gonna kinda go over and uh, show you how to make capwasser paste and uh, re-upload the video since I kinda screwed up all my footage. But pretty much what I do is I get some capwasser from down there, put it in one of these uh, little cylinders and I use a syringe and I pull up all the capwasser in there and then I paste it on here. So hopefully that gives you some explanation of what I'm doing. I'm going to kind of go over it and put some more calc wasser on stuff. Now the thing you want to be aware of is that you don't want any of this paste getting anywhere you don't want it. So you have to go nice and slow and drip the paste all over the blue anthelia. Sometimes it's hard to squeeze it out. If you get it on any of your LPS, you're going to burn it to death. So careful when you're doing it. It's okay if you don't get it all at once. You can always come back and do it again. But you have to be aware that your alkalinity and calcium are going to spike. Even though it's not going into the water column, you don't want to do too much at once because the alkalinity and calcium will definitely spike with this. Trying to get these little guys here. It's not working though. Oh, there we go. Those guys are getting it good. And it's okay if you get a little bit on your SPS at the base because these guys are all covered up there. But if you do have any that get on any of your corals, you might want to gently brush them off with your hand or else you're going to burn them to death. Now the worst thing about this is the devastation it does to all the corals that it touches. So I'm going to try to get a top down shot. You can kind of see right there on my, all right where the bunny is. Yep, lawnmower bunny. Right there. Don't, don't eat that bunny. You can see how I kind of burnt some of the um, reverse sunset monopora. Now that stinks because I only had that on there for maybe a minute before I caught it. I realized I had to blow it off. Oop, I need to blow this off over here on my blasto. There's a little bit on it. It's not too bad, but I want to blow it off real quick. So I'll get my turkey baster. Uh, might be making it worse. But you can kind of see the utter devastation of this all there. I had to turn that rock. All that blue anthelia was just covering it. Now hopefully everything will be fine. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to wait probably five minutes before I kick on the return and then the um, Corals will all, well, hopefully I won't have a big sandstorm of coral, but, you know, things could happen. There should be just enough flow to kind of get everything circulating, and then I'll wait probably 15 minutes and then kick on the gyres, and then watch a snowfall occur in the tank. Hopefully all the paste kind of sticks to the rock after a little bit of time. The key is to make it really thick, because if you make it really thin, It'll float off into the water column. So I'll come back at you with the update to how this went, and then I'll get back to my uh, series about the uh, Brightwell uh, Coral Mino. So until next time, I'll see you later.